Hello and welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. Well, it appears we may finally be close to the end of the regime of petrol subsidy in Nigeria because after several back and forths, the federal government has finally come out clean that it can no longer afford to fund petrol subsidy in the country. The government spends a total sum of 3 trillion naira annually on petrol subsidy, which continues to increase consistently. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, says that is no longer sustainable, adding that the funds used in funding subsidy can actually be used to improve other sectors of the economy. The implication of this is that when the subsidy is removed, the cost of petrol is likely going to go above 300 naira per litre, rather than the subsidized 160 naira we currently buy it for. Well, to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal, the federal government says plans are in place to pay a monthly uh, stipend, if you like, of 5,000 naira as fuel grants now to the nation's most vulnerable citizens for a specified period of not more than six months, of not more than 12 months, I should say, before other cushioning measures will also take effect. Let's take a listen to the Minister of Finance explain this issue further. In the 2020 budget, we made a provision to assume that at the maximum, by the end of June, we must exit subsidy. So this last fact, the subsidy cost to the Federation was, 400, uh, was $243 billion. So if you look at a cost of about $250 billion per month, and it has been increasing consistently, so we, came, we, got, uh, we got something like... Um, we're expecting something like 120 billion per month from NMPC. Now we're getting to a point when NMPC is, is remitting near zero. And if we don't stop, we'll get to a point when they'll be giving us a bill to say, you have to actually pay me this for, for managing uh, um, the foil uh, provision in the, in the country. So if you take 250 billion times 12 months, that is about 3 billion naira. If we don't remove, sorry, 3 trillion, sorry, 3 trillion naira. If we don't remove that, that is what is costing us. This is money that we can use to apply to health and to education. The intervention we want to provide, it's, it's so we said between 20 to 40 million people, and there's still a lot of work going on within a committee that is chaired by His Excellency, the Vice President, with the states as members and a few of us ministers as members. So we have to do, have a landing as to the exact number between 20 to 40. We already agreed it would be 5,000 Naira. And we also agreed that the remittances have to be done digitally. So the e-Naira will help, but also so uh, the various payment platforms that are currently available. What we will not do is paying people in cash. So it will be transfers that people will, will receive through one kind of uh, electronic money or, or, or the other. And it's meant to be for a period of six, nine, or 12 months. So those are things that were still negotiation because it's still money that will have been for the Federation account. So everybody that is a member of FAC has to agree on the, on the numbers. The maximum will be 12 months. The minimum will be, will be six months. We thought it was important to do this to give people a chance to adjust before the, before the other support measures that federal government is working on materialize. And that is the provision of alternative to, um, to, to PMS, which is CNG, that is having mass transit vehicles transferring, uh, converted to CNG. And also the bringing on stream of petroleum refineries, including the Dangote refinery, so that it reduces even the need to import the PMS in the first place. So that's the logic behind uh, working, uh, targeting the middle of uh, next year. Well, joining me on the program to discuss this further is uh, Gabriel Idahusa, who is a financial consultant and also uh, a financial analyst as well. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the program. First off, let me get your take on the plan by the federal government on this whole subsidy uh, regime uh, thing, because this is certainly a, a, a new approach, if you like. Thank you, Deji. It's a new approach, but at the same time, the response has been uh, pretty unanimous. 
that uh, the way to go uh, needs to be further explored. Because if you are going to be sending out $5,000 to what number of people, how do you determine those people? How are you sure that um, a significant amount of that is not going to be diverted, even if it were achieve the required impact? So there, there are a lot of views as to how to bring uh, support or palliative to the, um, the Nigerians as a whole. Perhaps we want to look at a significant reduction in various cost of living items, like hospital bills around the country. Can we significantly get them reduced? School fees at all levels, primary, secondary, and university. Can government reduce those ones significantly to be 60%, 40%, 80%? And then the transportation that already exists, whether they are or public buildings around the states, can the cost we pay now be significantly reduced? Can taxes, personal income taxes, be significantly reduced so that we begin to feel the, the direct benefits where it is already impacting on, on Nigerians? So we, we need to look at all the cost items that Nigerians are already carrying in their normal life and try to reduce them. And you don't have to set up a, a, a huge machine, no matter how efficient it's supposed to be by um, uh, electronic payments or trying to pay 5,000 or whatever amount to whatever number of people, whichever way you are going to determine that, those number of people. There, there's a consensus that that's, uh, trying to do that is, is not the way to go. That the way to go is look at the touch points of Nigeria of Nigeria's cost of living, health, education, transportation in existing transport systems, and channel all the palliatives or comfort or solace to all those areas that we already spend money on. That that would be yeah. a much a much more uh, effective way of uh, bringing the to, to Nigerians. With this um, distribution of five thousand dollars to a no number of people that are going to be determined in a way that is not very likely to be scientific. And uh, let me just, uh, sorry to interject now. Uh, now, according to the government, uh, it's actually not settled on the number of persons it wants to pay this 5,000 naira to. Um, and the number is actually, according to the minister, is going to be between 20 and uh, 40 million. Uh, of course, you, you, you do have a point there how to select this uh, poorest of the poor among Nigerians. But you, you look at this, w would, you, would you say, because the, the government has said, look, it's not as if the cushioning effects are not going to come, that the cushioning effects will come eventually and that you're going to have refineries, that it is giving this 5,000 naira pending when the cushioning effects will take place. And that's the reason why it has said, look, uh, this is not going to go beyond uh, between six months and, and the maximum 12 months. So um, you, you look at that approach. Uh, how sustainable is it? Because if the government was going to pay this 5,000 naira to, let's say, 40 million persons, for instance, over a period of 12 months, you're looking at 240 or around 200 billion uh, naira. Yes, if it is not sustainable, there is no scientific, accurate way of determining the people. And if we not have the relevant impacts, when you send 5,000 Naira to who or for what, Nigerians don't consume the Naira. They consume services for their daily life cost of living. Where are these costs going? They are going to healthcare into transportation in the existing transport systems, into education, paying of school fees. So you can, we can channel these funds directly into those costs. And you don't need to wait for six months before you, bring, you, you begin to provide those palliatives. The, the refineries are close to being built. A number of the uh, modular refineries have started production. The Dangote refinery may be another six or nine months. It's, it's not necessary for government to have this kind of six months, nine months, whatever, 
temporary palliative before going to the actual palliatives. This is the time to address those 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 issues immediately. Just quickly, I'll because I'll come back to you, sir. Let me just quickly take a short break. We'll come back to you. Welcome back. And if you've just joined us, we're discussing uh, the plan by the federal government to remove petrol subsidy next year and, of course, what uh, it has in place uh, to cushion the effects for people so that they don't really feel it that much. And I'm, being, I'm still, <laughs> on the, still joining us on the program is uh, Mr. Gabriel Idahosa, who is a financial consultant. Mr. Idahosa, thank you very much for uh, your time. Now, let me ask you this. The, the truth is that Subsidy has to go one way or another. You're not against that. What you're actually against is the measures the government is taking to cushion the effects on people, right? Precisely. Now. That, that's really the point. The, the measures have to achieve the proposed objective, which is to remove the impact, direct impact on the cost of living on Nigerians. That, that's really the question, that's the concern. Now, um, from, from what you are seeing, how easy do you think it's going to be for the government to deal with this? I mean, to remove this subsidy. You know the kind of challenge uh, previous governments have actually faced, including this one, as a matter of fact, when, when they did uh, try to, to remove subsidy. How do you think this is going to go down with people? Do you think the labor unions are going to accept this? Already they are threatening fire and brimstone. But the well, removal to keep the subsidy. Yeah, removal of subsidy will never be easy. In fact, in most economies, it has never been easy in any economy. It has been a matter of a determined process that will have some pain. But after that pain, we we'll begin to see the results. Uh, it, it's just that we had delayed it for so long that the pain is much harder than what it could have been if we re re remove it earlier. There will be pain. It will be for a certain period. And then we begin to see the benefits. So, so what is important is that we, we take the bitter pill at some point, and begin to address the pain as efficiently and as fast as possible. It is possible for that to be done, and that is why it is important we start early to address where the pain really is. The pain is in the cost of transportation, the cost of health care, the school fees that parents pay. These are direct effects of any, 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 anything that has to do with social welfare. They, 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 they address the issues that exist now and that will only become more pronounced when we remove it, the subsidy. So, so they will be there. It is just for us to now decide that we, we face it once and for all and then move on. Because there is no time where you can remove subsidies without some pain. There, it cannot happen. It's just, there's no science to make it happen. We just have to accept that it is a cost of taking a very important policy decision in the history of a country like Nigeria that has had subsidies for so long, even when it was never justified. Whether it was 20 years ago, or 25 years ago, or today, it was never really justified. It, it never helped us in any way. So there will be pain. The, 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 the thing is for government to find out what is the easiest way, or what are the easiest ways of reducing the pain. That the pain will be there. The truth is that there are no easy ways at all. You look at it, there's, there's just no easy way. We just have to bite the bullet, so to speak. Absolutely. 
it requires a government with a very strong will to do it. If, 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 if the government does not do it now, at some point we still have to do it. We, we, we had to deal with difficult decisions in this country at various times. And some governments had to take, take those decisions. When we wanted to get out of a single operator for telephone lines, this country had to take that decision. And if you look at various, where we wanted to consolidate the banking system, the government had to take very hard decisions. There were a lot of job losses initially from some banks that were consolidated. But today we are all happy with the kind of banking system that we now have. So there will be a price to pay for this decision. But it will not be long. It may be six months or one year, and we we'll begin to see that it was a good decision to take. Deborah Dahusa, financial analyst, thank you very much for joining us on the program of sharing your thoughts with us. I will take a short break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. And I'm now being joined on the program to continue the conversation on uh, the plan by the federal government to, re to remove subsidy now by 2022. Uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf is uh, an economist and he's also the CEO of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprises. He joins us from Lagos. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program. Let, let me start. Uh, you, 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 you have seen the plan outlined by the federal government. You, you must have heard uh, what the, the Minister of Finance said. What, what do you make of that plan? Because I know you... You've always been an advocate for the removal of fuel subsidies. So does this plan actually meet your expectation? Because it's, it's quite clear that this subsidy regime is not sustainable. And if we are not careful, we could do a lot more damage uh, to the economy and particularly to our macroeconomic environment. Uh, you can see the kind of pressure that is exerting on the finances of government. Mm. You can see the kind of uh, level of fiscal deficit, the debt profile, the debt service component of government expenditure. Clearly, this is not sustainable. And economic management is not just about what is popular. I think it's also about what is sustainable. It's not just about the comfort of those who are citizens today. It's also about the future generation of this country. So uh, in whatever we do, we also need to bear all of this in mind. I know it is politically very difficult to push. The governments, I mean, have tried this uh, in, the, in, the, in the time past. It has been very difficult. But I think we need to do a lot more engagement very robust engagement to get all the stakeholders on board. But clearly it is not sustainable uh, at a time when we are talking about lack of funding for education, for security, for infrastructure, for health, and we are spending as high as $2 trillion or even more on subsidy. It's so, so what do you make of the plan then by the government uh, to, as the minister said, um, give what 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 is called fill grants now to to the poorest of the poor the plan is is to uh, pay them some kind of stipend for like between six to twelve months uh there's no conclusion yet uh, on the, the actual number of, of months but of course the minister said he would not exceed 12 months so between six and 12 months pay pay them five thousand naira each and they're looking a figure of uh, between 20 uh, to 40 million nigerians so uh, you know, pay them this field grant for, 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 for some time uh, so as to cushion the effect and allow this uh, subsidy, uh, 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 the, the subsidy regime now to be phased out completely. And then uh, after then, uh, no, no more payment and everything, you know, subsidy is gone. And uh, we, we begin to buy uh, petrol at uh, uh, deregulated prices. Well, I think it is a good idea because uh, with 
this kind of policy transition that the government mm -hmm. wants to embark upon, uh, you need to mitigate the shocks, especially on the vulnerable segments of society. Uh, you also need to do something that is also symbolic, apart from its impact uh, on, on the vulnerable segment. So I think it's not a bad idea, but what is important in this approach, first, mm -hmm. is to ensure the integrity of the database, to ensure that those who make up, whether it is 20 million or 40 million, have been properly validated, possibly by all the critical stakeholders in the economy. Secondly, is to ensure proper inclusion, to ensure that truly those who should be part of it are part of it across the length and breadth of this country. There can be conversation as to other models of mitigating the pains. Mm. I think this is just a first proposal on the table. The minister has said that there will be some engagement around this. It's not yeah. final. Yeah. And uh, I, we see how it goes, but it is important to have a discussion around it. And I must emphasize that labor should be also robust. And, and I was just going to ask you about labor because we saw labor come out to say it, it is not going to accept it, that the government should, shouldn't even think about removing subsidy. And this has always been uh, labor's position. I mean, labor unions have been consistent. They've, they've always insisted that subsidy must remain um, somehow it appears they are not looking at the big picture in terms of how much the government is spending on subsidy. If the government says it is spending three trillion naira now, and, and that is of course likely to go up, the, the truth is just as you have said, at some point uh, the government may just not be able to pay the money again because it just would not be able to find the money to pay for these subsidies anyway. Well, I think uh, one can only hope that Labour will this time around uh, be a bit realistic in its position. Uh, it should be clear to them now that this is not sustainable. Uh, already many of their own members across the states, the state governments are struggling to pay their salaries. Some of them are even owing areas of salaries. We know what is happening to the, to the pensioners across the states. You know, a, a large part of this challenge is coming from the fact that we are, we are spending so such a humongous amount on subsidy. We are talking of two trillion or above that. So I think they, they need to be more more realistic. This is not a time for a popularity contest or show. This is not about uh, you know sentiments or emotions. This is about what is realistic, what is pragmatic, and what is sustainable. I think what labor should do is to engage on the with government on how to mitigate the shocks of this thing. Because we need to have an economy before even labor can exist. We need to have a country for labor to exist. So I think they, they need to be more tolerant. They need to be more accommodating of other views on this matter. Uh, and what would you say about those who say, look, the, the timing of this is wrong. It's always been a constant debate about the issue of timing that the timing of this is wrong, that you look at uh, in inflation is quite high and that things are quite tough and uh, that by removing a subsidy now or even early next year, uh, that um, whether early or middle of next year, that it would only compound uh, the, 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 the difficulties that uh, people are going through. You see, in matters like this, there's perhaps no perfect time to do it. Uh, what is important is to do it properly uh, to ensure that uh, we take into account all the key sensibilities uh, in the matter. And let me also say that the government is hoping, and I'm, 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 I'm expecting that this will materialize, mm. that by middle of next year, which is July or June or July, we will have, have an improvement in local refining capacity. Refining capacity, yes from either the government uh, refining, refineries or the Dangote refineries. I think that is also part of the expectation of government. If the local refining capacity increases, the kind of shocks and the pressures that this will have on the citizens may not be as much as what we're experiencing now. Uh, the, the pressure is so much now because we are importing practically everything. 
you know, and we know what the exchange rate is and all of that, the fleet cost and all of that. So I think this is where the, the problems are coming from. So government is trying to align this withdrawal with the timing of uh, the, the commission of some of these refineries. And that's, if, if it materializes, I think that will help a great deal in managing the situation and, and the shocks that will result from this. Dr. Muda Yusuf, uh, economist and CEO of uh, the Center for the Promotion of uh, Private Enterprises. Thank you very much for joining us on the program and uh, for your thoughts there. Thank you very much, sir. Well, that's how much we can take on the program this week. We thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.